Hey, everyone. Welcome to this event, HPE Compute Security. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Kevin DePue joins me next, Senior Director at Future Surfer Architecture at HPE. Kevin, it's great to have you back on the program. Thanks, Lisa. I'm glad to be here. One of the topics that we're going to unpack in this segment is, is all about cybersecurity. And if we think of how dramatically the landscape has changed in the last couple of years, I was looking at some numbers that HPE had provided. Cybercrime will reach $10.5 trillion by 2025. It's a couple of years away. The average total cost of a data breach is now over $4 million. 15% year-over-year crime growth predicted over the next five years. It's no longer, if we get hit, it's when, it's how often, what's the severity. Talk to me about the current situation with the cybersecurity landscape that you're seeing. Yeah, I mean, the, the numbers you're talking about are just staggering. And then that's exactly what we're seeing. And that's exactly what we're hearing from our customers. It is just absolutely key. Customers have too much to lose. The, the dollar cost is just, like I said, staggering. Um, and, and here at HP, we know we have a huge part to play, but we also know that we need partnerships across the industry to solve these problems. So we have partnered with, with our, uh, our various partners to deliver these Gen 11 products, whether we're talking about partners like AMD or partners like our NIC vendors, storage card vendors. Um, we know we can't solve the problem alone. And we know this, the issue is huge. And like you said, the numbers are staggering. Um, so we're really, we're really partnering with, with uh, all the right players to ensure we have a secure solution. So we can stay ahead of the bad guys to try to limit the, uh, the attacks on our customers. Right, limit the damage. What are some of the things that you've seen particularly change in the last 18 months or so? Anything that you can share with us that's eye-opening, more eye-opening than some of the stats we already shared? Well, there, there's been a massive number of attacks just in the last 12 months, but I wouldn't really say it's so much changed because the amount of attacks has been increasing dramatically over the years for many, many, many years. It's just a very lucrative uh, area for the bad guys, whether it's ransomware or stealing personal data, whatever it is, it's there, there's unfortunately a lot of money to be made into it, made from it, and a lot of money to be lost by the good guys, the good guys being our customers. So um, it's not so much that it's changed, it's just that it's even accelerating faster. So the real change is it's accelerating even faster because it's becoming even more lucrative. So we have to stay ahead of these bad guys. One of the statistics of uh, Microsoft operating environments the number of tax in the last year up 50% year over year. That's a huge acceleration. And we've got to stay ahead of that. We have to make sure our customers don't get impacted to the level that these, these staggering number of attacks are. The, the bad guys are out there. We've got to protect protect our customers from the bad guys. Absolutely. The acceleration that you talked about is it's, it's kind of frightening. It's very eye-opening. We do know that security, you know, we've talked about it for so long as a, as a, a C-suite priority, a board level priority. We know that some of the data that HPE also sent over, organizations are risking, are, are listing cyber risks as a top five concern in their organization. IT budget spend is going up where security is concerned. And so security is on everyone's mind. In fact, the Cube did, um, I guess in the middle part of last decade, did a series on this, really focusing on cybersecurity as a board issue. And they went into how companies are structuring security teams, changing their assumptions about the right security model, offense versus defense. But security has gone beyond the board. It's top of mind. And it's on. It's an integral part of every conversation. So my question for you is when you're talking to customers, what are some of the key challenges that they're saying Kevin, these are some of the things, the landscape is accelerating. We know it's a matter of time. What are some of those challenges and then their key pain points that they're coming to you to help solve? Yeah, at the highest level, it's simply that security is incredibly important to them. Um, we talked about the numbers. There's so much money to be lost that what they come to us and say is security is important for us. What can you do to protect us? What can you do to prevent us from being one of those statistics? So. Um, at a high level, that's kind of what we're seeing. At a with a little more detail, we know that there's customers doing digital transformations. We know that there's customers going hybrid cloud. They've got a lot of initiatives on their own. They've got to spend a lot of time and a lot of bandwidth um, tackling things that are important to their business. They just don't have the bandwidth to worry about yet another thing, which is security. So we are doing everything we can and partnering with everyone we can 
to help solve those problems for customers because we're hearing, hey, this is huge. This is too big of a risk. How do you protect us? And by the way, we only have limited bandwidth. So what can we do? What we can do is make them assured that that platform is secure, that we're we're creating a foundation for a very secure platform and that we've worked with our partners to secure all the pieces. So yes, they still have to worry about security, but there's pieces that we've taken care of that they don't have to worry about. And there's capabilities that we've provided that they can use and we've made that easy so they can build so secure solutions on top of it. What are some of the things when you're in customer conversations, Kevin, that you talk about with customers in terms of what makes HPE's approach to security really unique? Well, I think a big thing is security is part of our, our DNA. It's part of everything we do, um, whether we're designing our own ASICs for our BMC, the ILO ASIC, ILO 6 used on Gen 11, or whether it's our firmware stack, um, the ILO firmware, our, our system UEFI firmware, all those pieces and everything we do, we're thinking about security. When we're building products in our factory, we're thinking about security. When we're think, designing our supply chain, we're thinking about security. When we make requirements on our suppliers, we're driving security to be a key part of those components. So security is in our DNA, security is top of mind. Security is something we think about in everything we do. We have to think like the bad guys. What could the bad guy take advantage of? What could the bad guy exploit? Um, so we try to think like them so that we can protect our customers. And so security is something that that uh, really is pervasive across all of our development organizations, our supply chain organizations, our factories, and our partners. So that's what we think is unique about HPE is because security is so important. And there's a whole lot of pieces of our ProLiant servers that we do ourselves that many others don't do themselves. And since we do it ourselves, we can make sure that security is in the design from the start, that those pieces work together in a secure manner. Um, so we think that gives us a, an advantage from a security standpoint. Security is very much intention-based at HPE. I was reading in some notes, and you just did a great job of talking about this, that fundamental security approach, security is fundamental to defend against threats that are increasingly complex through what you also call an uncompromising focus to state-of-the-art security and innovations built into your DNA, and that organizations can protect their infrastructure, their workloads, their data from the bad guys. Talk to us briefly in our final few minutes here, Kevin, about fundamental, uncompromising, protected, and the value in it for me as an HPE customer. Yeah, when we talk about fundamental, we're talking about the those fundamental technologies that are part of our platform. Things like We've integrated TPMs and soldered them down in our platforms. We now have platform certificates as a standard part of the platform. We have iDev ID. And probably most importantly, our platforms continue to support what we really believe was a groundbreaking technology, Silicon Root of Trust. And what that's able to do, we have millions of lines of firmware code in our platforms. And with Silicon Root of Trust, we can authenticate all of those lines of firmware, whether we're talking about the the ILO 6 firmware, our UEFI firmware, um, our CPLD in the system, there's other pieces of firmware. We authenticate all those to make sure that not a single line of code, not a single bit has been changed by a bad guy, even if the bad guy has physical access to the platform. So that silicon root of trust technology is making sure that when that system boots up and that hands off to the operating system and then eventually the customer's application stack, that it's starting with a solid foundation, that it's starting with a system that hasn't been compromised. And then we build other things into that silicon root of trust, such as the ability to do the scans and the authentications at runtime, the ability to automatically recover. If we detect something has been compromised, we can automatically update that compromised piece of firmware to a good piece before we've run it, because we never want to run firmware that's been compromised. So. That's all part of that silicon root of trust solution. And that's a fundamental piece of the platform. And then when we talk about uncompromising, what we're really talking about there is how we don't compromise security. And one of the ways we do that is through an extension of our silicon root of trust with a capability called SPDM. And this is a, 
technology that we saw the need for. We saw the need to authenticate um, our option cards and the firmware in those option cards. Silicon Root, Prote Silicon Root Trust protects against many attacks, but one piece it didn't do is verify the actual option card firmware in the option cards. So we knew to solve that problem, we would have to partner with others in the industry, our NIC vendors, our storage controller vendors, our GPU vendors. Um, so we worked with industry standards bodies and those other partners to design a capability that allows us to authenticate all of those devices. And we worked with those vendors to uh, get the support both in their side and in our platform side, so that now Silicon Roofs and Trust has been extended to where we protect and we trust those option cards as well. Um, so that's when, when, what we're talking about with uncompromising. And with, with protect, what we're talking about there is our capabilities around protecting against, for example, supply chain attacks. We have our, our trusted supply chain solution, which allows us to guarantee that our server, when it leaves our factory, what the server is when it leaves our factory will be what it is when it arrives at the customer. And if the bad guy does anything in that transition, the transit from our factory to the customer, they'll be able to detect that. So we enable certain capabilities by default, a uh, capability called server configuration lock, um, which can ensure that nothing in the server is changed, whether it's firmware, hardware configurations, swapping out processors, whatever it is, we'll detect if a bad guy did any of that and the customer will know it before they deploy the system. That gets enabled by default. We have an intrusion detection technology option. When you use by the, the trusted supply chain, that is included by default. Um, that lets you know, did anybody open that system up? Even if the system's not plugged in, did somebody take the hood off and potentially um, do something malicious to it? Uh, we also enable a capability called UEFI Secure Boot, which can go authenticate some of the drivers that are located on the option card itself. Um, those kind of capabilities, also ILO high security mode gets enabled by default. So all these things are enabled in the platform to ensure that if it's attacked going from our factory to the customer, it will be detected and the customer it. won't deploy yeah. a system that's been maliciously attacked. So that's Got it. how we protect the customer through those capabilities. Outstanding. You mentioned partners. My last question for you, we've got about a minute left, Kevin, is bring AMD into the conversation. Where do they fit in this? AMD is an absolutely crucial partner. No one company, even HP, can do it all themselves. Um, there's a lot of partnerships. There's a lot of synergies working with AMD. We've been working with AMD for almost 20 years since we delivered our first AMD-based ProLiant back in 2004, the HP ProLiant DL585. So we've been working with them a long time. We work with them years ahead of when a processor is announced. Um, we benefit each other. We look at their designs and help them make their designs better. They let us know about their technology so we can take advantage of it in our designs. So they have a lot of security capabilities like their memory encryption technologies, their AMD secure processor, their secure encrypted virtualization, which is an absolutely unique and breakthrough technology to protect uh, virtual machines in hypervisor environments and protect them from malicious hypervisors. So they have some really great capabilities that they've built into their processor. And we also take advantage of the capabilities they have and ensure those are used in our solutions and in securing the platform. So a really Such great, a great, great partnership, great synergies there. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me on the program, talking about compute security, what HPE is doing to ensure that security is fundamental, that it is uncompromised and that your customers are protected end to end. We appreciate your insights. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Lisa. We've just had a great conversation with Kevin DePew. Now I get to talk with David Chang, Data Center Solutions Marketing Lead at AMD. David, welcome to the program. Thank you, and thank you for having me. So one of the hot topics of conversation that we can't avoid is security. Talk to me about some of the things that AMD is seeing from the customer's perspective, why security is so important for businesses across industries. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, security is, is top of mind for, for almost every every customer I'm talking to right now. You know, there's several key market drivers and, and trends, um, you know, in, in, out there today that's really needing a better and innovative solution for, for security, right? So 
um, you know, the high cost of data breaches, for example, uh, will cost enterprises in downtime of, of the data center. And that time is time that you're not making money, right? And potentially even leading to your to a loss of customer confidence in your in your in your company's offerings. So there's real costs that you you know our customers are facing every day, not being prepared and not having proper security measures uh, set up in the data center. Um, in fact, according to to one report, over 400 uh, high tech threats are being introduced every minute. So every day, numerous new threats are popping up and they're just, you know, the, um, you know, the bad guys are just getting more and more sophisticated. So you have to take, um, you know, measures today and you have to um, protect yourself, um, you know, end to end with solutions like what a AMD and HPE have to offer. Yeah, you talked about some of the costs there. They're exorbitant. I've seen recent figures about the average, you know, cost of a data breach or ransomware is is, is close to is over four million dollars. The cost of of brand reputation you brought up that's a great point because nobody wants to be the next headline. And security, I'm sure, in your uh, experience, is a it's a board level conversation. It's it's absolutely, absolutely. table stakes for every organization. Let's talk a little bit about some of the specific things now that AMD and HPE are doing. I know that you have a really solid focus on building security features into the Epic processors. Talk to me a little bit about that focus and some of the great things that you're doing there. Yeah, so you know we've partnered with HPE for a long time now. I think it's almost twenty years that we've been in business together, um, and and you know we we help. Um, you know, we, we work together to design in uh, security features even before the silicon's even you know even born. So you know we, we have a great relationship with 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 all our partners, including HPE, and you know HPE has you know um, an end really great end to end security story, and AMD fits really well into that. You know, if you kind of think about how security all started, you know, in, in the data center, uh, you you've had strategies around encryption of the, um, you know, the data in in flight, uh, the network security, you know, um, you know, VPNs and 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 security on the NICs, um, and and even on the on the hard drives, you know, uh, data that's at rest, um, you know, encryption has. Uh, you know, security has been sort of part of that strategy for a, a long time. And really for, you know, for ages, nobody really thought about the the actual data in use, which is, um, you know, the, the uh, information that's being passed from the CPU to the, the the memory and and even in virtualized environments to the 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 virtual machines um, that uh, that everybody uses now. So um, you know, for a long time, nobody really thought about uh, that at you know that third leg of of encryption. And so AMD comes in and says, "Hey, you know, this is things that as as um, the bad guys are getting more sophisticated, you, you have to start worrying about that, right? And you know, for example, um, you know, you know, think of think." People think about memory, um, you know, being sort of, um, you know, non-persistent, and you know, when, after, uh, you know, after a certain time, the the you know the the data in the memory kind of goes away, right? Um, but that's not true anymore because um, even uh, in in memory data now. Um, you know, th there's a lot of memory modules that still can retain data up to 90 minutes, even after uh, power loss. And with something as simple as compre compressed air or, or liquid nitrogen, you can actually freeze memory dims now long enough to extract the data from that memory module for up, you know, up up to two or three hours, right? So a lot, a more than enough time to read valuable data and and in even encryption keys off of that memory module. So our our world's getting more complex, and um, you know, more the more data out there, the more insatiable need for compute and storage. Um, you know, data management is becoming uh, all all the more important, uh, you know, to keep all of that going and secure, you know, uh, and 
and creating security for those threats, uh, it becomes more and more important. And again, especially in virtualized environments where, um, you know, like hyper-converged infrastructure or vir virtual desktop memories, uh, it's really hard to keep up with all those different attacks, all those different um, attack surfaces. It sounds like what you were just talking about is what AMD has been able to do is identify yet another vulnerability, another yes. attack surface in memory to be able to to plug that hole for organizations that didn't weren't able to do that before. Yeah, and you know, and, and we kind of started out with that belief that security needed to be scalable and and able to adapt to to changing environments. So you know, we we came up with um, you know the um, you know the, the philosophy or the design philosophy that we're going to continue to build on those security features generation over generation and stay ahead of those. Um, evolving attacks. Um, you know, a great example is in, in the third gen, um, you know, Epic CPU that, uh, family that we had, we actually uh, created this um, feature called SEVSNP, uh, which stands for uh, Secure Nest Paging. And it's really all around this, uh, this new attack where, um, you know, your, uh, the, the, you know, it's, basically hypervisor-based attacks where people are, uh, you know, the bad actors are writing in to the memory and writing in um, basically bad data uh, to corrupt the, mem you know, to, to corrupt the data in the memory. So SEV SMP is, was put in place to help, um, you know, um, secure that, um, you know, before that became a problem. And, you know, you heard in the news just recently that that's becoming a more and more, uh, more of a bigger issue. Um, and the great news is that we had that uh, feature built in, uh, you know, uh, before that became a big problem. And now you're on the fourth gen of those mm -hmm. epic processes. Talk to me a little bit about some of the innovations that are now in fourth gen. Yeah, so in fourth gen, we actually added, um, you know, on top of that. So we've we've got, uh, you know, the 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 base of our um, our what we call Infinity Guard um, is is all around the secure boot, the um, you know the. Uh, the, the the secure root of trust that you know that we work with uh, HPE on uh, the, the strong memory encryption and the SEV, which is the secure encrypted virtualization. Um, and so remember those uh, SEV SMP um, uh, get, uh, you know uh, and cap capabilities that I talked about earlier. We've actually in the fourth gen added 2x the number of SCV SMP guests for even higher number of confidential VMs to support even more customers uh, than before, right? We've also added uh, more guest protection uh, from uh, simultaneous multi-threading or SMT uh, side channel attacks. And, you know, while it's not officially part of Infinity Guard, we've actually added more APEC uh, acceleration, which greatly benefits the security of those confidential VMs with the larger number of vCPUs, which basically means that you can build larger VMs and still be secured. And then lastly, we actually added um, even stronger um, AES uh, encryption. So we went from 128-bit to 256-bit, which is now military-grade uh, encryption on top of that. Um, and, you know, and, and that's really, uh, you know, the de facto crypto, uh, cryptography uh, algorithm that is used for most of the applications for, you know, customers like the U.S. federal government um, uh, and, and all, you know, the, it is really an essential element for memory security in the HPC applications. And I always say, if it's good enough for the U.S. government, it's good enough for you. Exactly. Well, it's got to be. Talk yeah. a little bit about how AMD is doing this together with HPE, a little bit about the partnership as we round out our conversation. Sure, absolutely. So security is only as strong as the layer below it, right? So, you know, that's why modern security must be built in uh, rather than, than, you know, bolted on or, or, or you know, 
added after the fact, right? So HP and AMD actually developed this layered approach for protecting critical data together, right? Uh, through our leadership in, in security features uh, and innovations, we really deliver a set of hardware-based uh, features that um, that help decrease potential attack surfaces with with that holistic ap approach uh, that you know that safeguards the critical information across system you know the, the entire system lifecycle, and we provide the confidence of built-in silicon authentication on the world's most secure industry standard servers, and with a 360 degree approach that uh, brings high availability to critical workloads while helping um, to defend you know, against internal and external threats. So things like HP root of, uh, uh, Silicon Root of Trust with the trusted supply chain, which you know, obviously AMD is part of that supply chain, um, combined with AMD's Infinity Guard technology really helps provide that end-to-end -end data protection in today's business. And that is so critical for businesses in every industry. As you mentioned, the attackers are getting more and more sophisticated. The vulnerabilities are increasing. The ability to have a, par a partnership like HPE and AMD to deliver that end-to-end -end data protection is table stakes for businesses. David, thank you so much for joining me on the program, really walking us through what AMD is doing, the, the fourth gen Epic processors and how you're working together with HPE to really enable security to be successfully accomplished by businesses across industries. We appreciate your insights. Well, thank you again for having me and we uh, appreciate the partnership with HPE. So we want to thank you for watching our special program, HPE Compute Security. I do have a call to action for you. Go ahead and visit hpe.com slash security slash compute. Thanks for watching.